Welcome to the Tea Grannies. I'm Elise. And I'm Maria. Today we're here for a little bonus episode, so pour yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. Death Wish Aru flexed her fingers against the smooth white surface of her bone-handled knife. It felt especially comfortable in her grip for the weapon that had murdered her mother. Testing its balance in her palm, she eyed Triton from where she crouched in the forest clearing. His silver eyes glittered like gemstones, the left one framed by a thick claw-like scar stretching from forehead to cheekbone. His straight black hair was pinned up away from his warm brown skin. A rueful grin split his face, and he swung his own knife at her head. Eru batted it aside with her blade. She kicked up a flurry of dead leaves and mud and slapped the flat of her blade down on his wrist, hard enough to bruise. He dropped his weapon. She went for his throat. He raised his hands in surrender and took a step back, wiping dirt from his good eye. Still grinning. Eru lowered her knife and smirked right back. She picked at the silver antlers embroidered into the shoulders of her shirt, fighting down a flush of pleasure. Triton tossed a water skin at her from their saddlebags. Come on, if we hurry, we might have time to get to the city before the gates close. He grabbed Trick's reins to lead the copper mare through the trees. Aerith threw back a mouthful of water and held back. His mention of their deadline had the opposite effect on her. It rooted her boots into the ground as though the winter frost had frozen her there. Triton didn't notice. Aero glanced around the clearing, watching him step through the trees, leaving her behind. The city was the last place she wanted to be right now. He knew that. He also knew she didn't have much choice, which was why he wasn't turning around to give her the time of day. All right, so if you liked that first page, uh, you'll be happy to know that Elise wrote it. Yay! Uh, And I've read it um, quite a few times and at least had a good laugh at how my comments have not changed at all. Um, They're all very like, ah, this is the best and this is perfect and I'm obsessed, more, more, more. Um, But for the reader, for the listeners, (laughs) overall, we learn a lot about Iru in the first page and we can kind of guess that she has a tight-knit relationship with Triton and um, per my other notes, Triton is a total babe, and I think that that comes across very well on the first page. (laughs) And so we don't know yet if they have a romantic relationship, but that, uh, you know, we learn all those things later. And I think my favorite thing about the first page, now that I'm talking about it, is how you hint at all of her backstory without giving us any of it Mm. yet. Like in the first line, we've got for the weapon that murdered her mother, like that right there. If I, again, pick this up in a store and I read that first line, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm in. This sounds amazing. (laughs) And then how she doesn't want to go into the city and stuff like that. So we get a lot about her um, while still pushing the story forward. And she's still in the present day, but we're getting a little bit here and there about her past. So I love that. I also always love a good fight scene. I love the tension and I love all the descriptions. And that's that's it for my comments. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me right now, but I'm blushing. Saren hated it when they struggled. She gently eased the dead man's body into the wagon covered him with a worn woolen blanket, and wiped her dagger with the edge of it. A light breeze brushed over her skin, the salty air a welcome reprieve to the smell of blood. Torches flickered against the stone walls, casting shadows across the castle grounds. She tucked the blanket around his feet to hide the smears of fresh blood, and sighed. It was supposed to be a straightforward kill, but he hadn't been surprised by her attack. Saren wrapped her knuckles on the back of the wagon and frowned. The driver pressed his force forward without a word, and the wagon trundled out of the courtyard and into the darkness. For once, she didn't have the element of surprise, and she nearly paid for it. Next time, she would bring Duke with her. Her dog was eerily silent and clever. It had been a mistake to leave him behind. Saren hiked up her blood-stained petticoats and tucked her knife back into its sheath. The horse's hoofbeats faded away, leaving only the faintest strains of music from the ballroom. As much as she wanted to stay outside in the peaceful air, she knew she had to return. 
to inform her father of tonight's happenings, if nothing else. Saren dashed towards her rooms, her ruined slippers hanging from her fingertips. She needed to change before she could return to the ball, and she was already short on time. That bastard bled more than I thought. Her footsteps echoed against the tapestry-laden walls, and the torches quivered as she rushed past. All right, so now that you've heard me read them, you're going to hear me talk about them. It might be a little too much of my voice, but that's just too bad. At the risk of gushing for the next however long I talk, the this first page gives me chills. It makes me delighted. It makes me want to just read about women badass assassins for the rest of my life and not touch another genre ever again um <laughs> now i'm plushy yeah i don't know day. i don't know how we're gonna get through this this is this is harder than we thought way harder having your own word read <laughs> and then and then giving feedback to someone's face yeah that's a lot yeah, different a lot harder. um <laughs> Similar to Maria with mine, I have read the first page of this draft a couple different times, um, and I think it stayed relatively the same. Like, some details have definitely changed, and the pacing, I would say the pacing has improved, and it's, like, it's just snippy, and it works really well now. Um, but what I love about this, and what I love about most of the first pages that we've done on our other episodes is just how much we learn in such a short amount of time. And like I did a word count, there's only 280 words here. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all you get. And in that space, I have like seven to 10 different notes of what we learn. We learn that Saren killed somebody. We learn that Saren has killed before, probably many times, like She's experienced at this, at this stuff. She prefers the element of surprise, so she sneaks up on people that kill them. That, to me, says some kind of assassin. Um, she skipped out of a ball, a party, to make this kill, and she's expected to go back. So she's some kind of guest, I'm assuming. Her father is in on whatever this is, or so it seems. The wagon driver is definitely in on whatever this is and has probably disposed of bodies for her before. So there's, like, this whole network thing going on. It's not like she's doing this just as a one-off and uh, Buddy's helping out over here. No, it's like this is a whole thing and then she has her own rooms in the castle she's heading back there to change which means that she's either a very important guest uh who was invited to the party or she lives here in the castle all the time which means that she's somehow a part of the nobility most likely comes from a wealthy family and what the hell is she doing going around killing people in the castle grounds at night during a party she wouldn't rather be dancing. I mean, I would rather be killing than dancing, but I don't share that broadly. Right? <laughs> um, but it begs a question, right? It's an so, introvert's activity. <laughs> right? Murder. I think we can all understand this. Oh, I'm going to get arrested just for having a podcast. <laughs> whatever looks at our search history. Yeah, exactly. Very, very strange. Google already knows. You just, you, Google yeah. knows everything. They know we're me. weird. They know we're just, yeah murder but anyway <laughs> we get all of this information in one page and it's done in my opinion the descriptions um they don't bog anything down we get a very good idea of the setting the locale kind of a time period vibe without it being over overbearing um it's all woven in like seamlessly and then there's saren's thought process and we get a really nice balance of her emotions and the description and exposition and intrigue, and we don't get lost in names or info dumps. There's no confusion about what's happening. The action is very clear and well described and explained. Like it paints a vivid picture, and we don't get tired of it. So, I had like a couple wording phrasing suggestions to smooth out a couple of lines, but that's it. And um, can All I say perfection? I <laughs> Can I say perfect? Is, is that? Oh, she's like hiding a little bit. She doesn't want me to actually say it. I'm like out of the frame now. Like, oh, I don't want to be looked at. Oh, man. But yeah, this is such a good first page. But I do feel like it's really important for us to note for this one and for mine, we have written these as a first draft and shared them before. And then we've yeah. written them again. And then we've shared them with our writing group and had those people read through them. And then we've shared... Um, like larger sections with beta readers and had them read through mm -hmm. it and we've edited and edited and edited for continuity for these different things that we know we have to refine to make the story make, make sense from start yeah. to finish so I, I, yeah I don't want to leave off with the impression that oh, look at these two they're just kind of like we tooting their own horn and just whip this up in first draft and wow they're amazing <laughs> like 
Don't don't take that from this, please. And if you think they suck, you can keep that opinion to yourself. Okay? <laughs> really hard on these pages. You're allowed to have that opinion. I just don't want to hear it. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, we just we're not ready to hear it. We're fragile. Okay, it was hard enough having to read that and like hear feedback when we could see each other. Okay? <laughs> For my part, if someone has like feedback on my first page after listening to this i would love to hear it i want to know I what you think yes. right but yeah be gentle <laughs> be, ge- yeah. be gentle be nice be um, canadian about it okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man this was a little sneak peek we just ended up reading two first pages and if you didn't know before and now The first one was a page that I, Elise, wrote, and the second one was a page that she, Maria, wrote, and uh, we decided to bring our first page's critique session of season two to a close by, um, you know, telling each other how much we love each other, and it was great. (laughs) Positive vibes. (laughs) So, yeah, I want to reiterate the note that I made earlier that, like, those were very polished drafts. Um, they weren't first mm-hmm. drafts by any means. So that's why it was a bit of a uh, fangirl session instead of you know, actual critique. Um, Maybe next season we'll bust out some first drafts. Something stuff fresh. So they can see how much we really suck. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't worry. Everybody sucks. It's all good. Everybody's first oh, draft yes. really does suck. Here's an example. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can definitely do that if we feel yeah. brave enough. But yeah. no, there's something to be said for not um sharing your first draft if you don't feel comfortable and waiting till you've edited a bit and i definitely abide by that um and recommend it for anyone who's especially if you have anxiety or are just you know a little bit nervous about how people perceive you um Mm -hmm. it's generally a good idea to let it percolate and make a few changes before you send it out to the world but yeah those are just a couple of projects that we've each been working on and for this little tea break episode little bonus thing in between seasons we wanted to give a little update about what we're working on and where our thoughts are what we're headed for this year so if you follow me on instagram at all and if you follow the tea grannies on any of our socials you probably know that i am in the middle of publishing a trilogy right now and um book one and two are each out i released them both last year and i'm working on book three right now so i am deep in editing trenches and getting it ready for publishing in the summer and this book will wrap up my trilogy and then i'll be I'll be free. No, (laughs) I don't want to give that impression, but there is a little bit of that. Like when you come to the end of a project, even if you still love it, which I'm still in the space where, no, I love this book. I want to keep working on it. I'm not sick of it yet, um, which that means I still have work to do. But um, when you finish up a project that comes to the point where it's like, okay, I'm really ready to get out of this world, to get away from these characters and to work on something else. Um, And I have been feeling a bit of that. So I have like three or four different ideas on the go and I will be very ready to jump into one of them immediately um the one we just read today is probably the one I'm most excited about and I'm planning to edit the crap out of it send it for another round of beta reading edit some more and then I want to get it ready for querying because I want to try and go traditional with that one um I don't have a pitch or a synopsis written up yet so anything you can guess from the first 250 words that you heard in this episode is you know fair game who knows i'm not going to give anything away because i'm holding that one close to my chest but um (laughs) that will be a task for me this year just to get my synopsis and query and all that sorted out along with the polished draft and then i have a couple of other projects that i might get to work on um i have one that's it's out for for feedback with the writing group right now so i'm kind of like it's on the side burner all the time and i'm always kind of thinking about it but also i have so many other things to work on that i get distracted um but it's a um, elemental magic type stuff going on and spying and intrigue and it's just a lot of fun i'm getting some really good feedback from everyone so that's coming along nicely and then my other one is a bit of a it's still a secret project so all i can say for now it has to do with priestesses and family betrayals and hell beasts and it's gonna be delicious so that's what i'm excited about i'm excited for all of those but mostly <laughs> for the one that you read today that one. because <laughs> i've read it as a whole already and i'm like oh i just want more it's like I I've been teasing you with it for over a year. When, yes. When did you read it? Last year? 
like last year yeah and I've been I've been eagerly awaiting the edit so I can read it again <laughs> it'll be like brand new because it'll be so long since mm-hmm. I've read it mm-hmm. but <laughs> um as for me I'm still querying uh Kairos which is a project I wrote during the first pandemic lockdown was the only thing good that came out of lockdown um I'm pretty like I'm like really close to just giving up on querying just because I have been doing so much of it and I've gotten yeah. some really nice um requests and comments and like I've gotten I had a couple fulls out had a couple partials out um so I feel like it's good I just you know I think I'm gonna end up self-publishing it as <laughs> I'm working <laughs> I'm working out my plans right now while I'm talking mm-hmm. um I'm really kind of itching to get it out there so that's yeah. part of the the reason I want to self-publish um but we'll see I'm gonna I'm going to query a couple more. That's my plan. Query a few more agents. And then, you know, by like later in the spring, if I have no other requests or anything like that, I'm, I'm going to go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially like I I like the idea of self-publishing because I am a control freak. So the idea of having full creative control is like very tempting. Sure. Um, so there's that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as for other projects, um, I have the beginnings of a contemporary romance in the works, which is going to feature two travel writers covering the wild Atlantic way in Ireland. Um, my husband and I did that trip in 2017. It was one of the most fun trips we have ever done. So um, <laughs> yeah, I got inspiration from that. And the fact that I used to want to be a travel writer until I was like, how... Do people even get paid for that? And <laughs> I want to have dogs and that's not fair to dogs <laughs> to go away all the time. Right. Uh, and then there is Lady Killer, which you guys just heard the first page of. And that's with Elise right now for developmental edit. And once it's done, I'm going to go through that and do another round of edits, <laughs> make sure all the big picture stuff is sorted. And then it's going to go up to beta readers um, and probably another round of edits after that because you're never really done. And then I'll query that one too, uh, because again, like I'd like to go self or sorry, traditionally published, but if I don't, then self-publishing is, is on the table. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of okay with that either way, whatever happens. Nice. (laughs) Now that we've talked about all of our writing goals, uh, the next thing that naturally follows for us is probably reading goals because what else do we do with (laughs) our lives? Nothing, nothing at all. Everything else is Lies. It's all fake. We don't actually leave the house. Um, Mm -hmm. We don't actually look like you think we look. We're just these two hermits. We probably have beards. and um, We're like two little gremlins that stay in the house and read books and write books and drink tea. (laughs) And then at night, we switch to wine. Yep. And if you feed us after midnight, we turn into literal gremlins, if that, anyone's seen that movie. That sounds, yes, I watched it at Christmas time this this past Christmas for the first <laughs> oh, time. Just, it was horrendous. Oh my isn't God. Isn't it crazy? I know. My brother made me watch it when I was too young. Do you know about the sequels? Oh no. Oh, oh yeah. No, there's sequels? Mm-hmm. Yep. We oh, briefly dear. saw a scene from one on TV, like shortly after we saw the movie itself. And like, there's these like massive spider versions of the gremlin creatures and it's like... <laughs> Ooh, no, I'm but it's, out. Like it's it's so stupid that it's not scary, you know, oh, that where you're just laughing instead of being horrified. Yeah, so realistically scary is not really my jam for movies. No, not not no. mine either. But no. yeah, Gremlins isn't my thing either. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we were Anyways, talking about books. <laughs> we're not talking about movies. We're talking about books. I have been obsessing, obsessing is the word, over um. An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson lately, and I think you still haven't read it, so I, I don't. I won't give any spoilers, but it's I'll just, add it to my cart. Right oh now. my god, good! The, <laughs> <laughs> finally, the descriptions and the romance, and just because it's Fay, the Fair Folk, and oh my goodness, everything, uh, just how she approaches the Fay world building is so far is my favorite of any fae world building that I've seen, and that you know that's saying a lot for me. But if you know how much that I love Holly Black and SJMS and everyone who I've been obsessed with lately. Um, but yeah, An Enchantment of Ravens has been divine. But my list is a little bit long because I've been neglecting it. And one of the things I've been doing to neglect it has been reading more. And you have been, Maria has been um, enabling me 
by suggesting all these books and lending me all these books and <laughs> getting me into romance. You're the devil. But I just finished I, uh, <laughs> I just finished Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which was just adorable, like so adorable. And I'm not a big romance reader in case you haven't noticed. So any recommendations I get that are romance focused are for Maria. And I just loved it. Like I, <laughs> whenever I think about it, I just get warm and fuzzy and I want to go and read it again and it's so comforting and sweet and oh so good so but cute. like the characters are so cute and human but they're also beautiful and flawed and I just love how the author addresses each of their struggles and stuff like Chloe the protagonist is she's a black woman and she has fibromyalgia and this is like a super complex condition that leaves people very sensitive to pain and it can show up in different ways for different people. I have someone in my life who was recently diagnosed with it, and they've been sharing with me a bit about it and how medical professionals don't really understand it, so it's really hard to manage it because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to treat it. Um, so I don't know how Chloe's experience compares to other people who deal with fibro in real life, but um, it was really cool to see that represented in fiction. And I feel like the author just did a really genuine, uh, heartfelt job of trying to portray it well. Yeah, I loved the chronic illness rep in that. Like, it's a great book just overall, like, mm -hmm. leaving that even completely out. Even, like, you know, the romance is so great. Yeah. Um, but I, I really liked it. Like, um, for the people who follow me on Instagram, probably already know, but I have ulcerative colitis, which is a chronic illness. Uh, it's no walk in the park. I'm I'm having a flare right now, and it's it's terrible. Um, but chronic illness is not represented enough in fiction, and so I sometimes read stuff. I'm like, yeah, that'd be nice if I was like super healthy, <laughs> you know. And like that's just some some of the bitterness that comes with having a chronic illness. Mm. So it's nice to see it represented in fiction, and yeah, I just you know there was a few people had mentioned that the fibro like descriptions were not totally accurate, but I just want to say that everybody feels their chronic illness differently. Like there's yeah. a lot of people with um, ulcerative colitis that eat pretty much normal, pound six cups of coffee a day and they <laughs> don't need any meds. Um, then there's me who's on meds, but is still having a flare anyway. And mm -hmm. some people even need surgery if it gets very severe. So yeah, it's nice to see that in fiction. You probably won't see it in anything I write because when I write, I like to pretend that I don't have an illness. <laughs> I like to read about it, but I don't want to write it. Sure. Um, but yeah, as for my reading, I'm finally reading the Throne of Glass series. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like so late to the game. Okay? <laughs> I read a Court of Thorns and Roses series like first, which is, I guess, out of order. And Elise did recommend Throne of Glass to me like years ago. And I remember reading it and liking it. And I bought the second one. And then I just never read it. Yep. It's just, just sat there on my Kobo untouched. <laughs> um, but then... <laughs> Elise also suggested that I use Throne of Glass as a comp title for Lady Killer, which I is forgot all read. about that. But yeah. that's <laughs> so I was like, good. I should reread that because I can't use it as a comp if I don't even remember what happened in it. Uh huh. Yeah. So <laughs> I started reading it, and I just uh, well, I'm on Queen of Shadows, which is book four, I suppose five if you include the prequel, which I mm. haven't read, um, and it's been like super badass. So I'm really enjoying it. Uh, as far as romance, everyone knows I love my romance books, uh, but I haven't had any that really stood out to me except for one lately, and mm. that was Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. So it's a follow-up to It Happened One Summer, which is also amazing. Um, and Tessa Bailey is like a legend. Like if I could write Spice like she writes Spice, I would that would be my only <laughs> genre. You're, <laughs> you're going to get there. You're she is get so there. good at it. Oh, uh, you'll get there. So if you haven't read those books, if you haven't read anything by Tessa Bailey, you got it because like she's amazing. Like her stories are amazing too, but she just like the tension she creates is like mm -hmm. unreal. So she's one of my, my favorite romance authors ever. All right. So we've updated on writing, we've updated on reading, and we have not updated on the one thing that this platform is actually for. <laughs> so hi, season two is over. We um we need to talk about season three. What what is going on? <laughs> Well, <laughs> we just started brainstorming season three, so right. it's kind of going to be a surprise for everybody. Including um, us. <laughs> <laughs> including us, yeah. We're leaning towards focusing more on publishing, both indie and traditional. Uh, we've covered a little bit about publishing here and there, but we haven't gone 
deep enough into it. Uh, so that's what we'd like to do in season three. And our first pages segment has been very popular and we love doing it. So, by fun. The way. so we're going to keep going with that. And I thought we could do something similar, but with the query letters and with people's synopsis for their pitches for queries and stuff like that. So I'd like to do that. And maybe, maybe we'll have some guests. Like we were lucky enough to have Eileen cook on this year. Yeah, um, so, so maybe we will get someone for season three. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see. It'll be, it'll be, yeah, it'll be a surprise for everyone. I'm not surprise. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> when we have a lunch date in a couple of weeks, we're going to actually try and hammer out some of the stuff that's going to happen. Uh, but for right now, <laughs> if you have suggestions. <laughs> right. Yeah. We'd love to hear if there's any topics that anyone who listens to this podcast is interested in hearing about. Um, let us know. Mm -hmm. We don't have season three nailed down, so we might be able to make something work. Yeah. And we're curious, like, we want to know what you want to hear about. We don't want to just scream into the void ever after so yeah, that's what twitter's for yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah if you have some things you've been hoping we'll cover send us a message comment on one of our posts um reply to a story it doesn't have to be related to the post we don't care um at the tea grannies podcast on instagram and at the tea grannies on twitter or you can email us if you prefer that i know i do so the tea grannies at gmail.com for that um and as you all know we can talk forever about whatever so even if you feel like it's a teeny tiny question and it couldn't fill a whole episode <laughs> we'll show you just give us a shout <laughs> we'll put the kettle on we'll steep in the idea for a while and i'm sure we'll come up with plenty to say and that's the tea on what we're up to so if you've enjoyed our show please rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcasts you can follow us on social media all the links will be in the show notes and stay tuned for updates on season three happy writing